everyone yeah i will be here wanted to be here and the thanks uh, for inviting me here to talk on open innovation um when i heard about the open innovation for the first time actually i realized the power of it uh, when i was working for my earlier company uh when in the first time we invited for the brainstorming session the customers suppliers and then the customers were basically the medical product actually we invited the doctors nurses and many other people from the other departments to other departments as well as in the other businesses in the same group um we realized like you know the when we asked like uh, what are the pain point pain points uh, uh, to the some of the nurses actually they regularly use the products and all that and then in the in the in the process of discussion actually they came out with a like you know the some of the very painful is like uh, in the icu is like when you want to reduce the noise in the alarm noise in the night time it 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 rises by itself because of the uh, noise level in around surrounding you come down so they have to go to the each and every equipment and reduce the noise because the noise level will go up in the night then like uh, she came with why can't you control the noise because anyway you have a clock in the clock running in your uh, in your in your product so it was a great idea from a nurse coming out with an idea such an idea and try our people like another you know, the team started working to it and then came out with a uh, interesting uh, feature in the product then like another you know, those ideas have been implemented and then this is one of the successful feature uh, introduced in the medical product during that time so then i realized like another you know, the having more number of people from outside uh, giving a new ideas uh, and getting the new ideas from the outside is more, uh, more important than uh, designing to our requirements uh, listening to the customer the second part uh, uh, is like one more uh, interesting uh, example i want to quote here is uh, it was a meter uh, metering energy meter company actually it was always the problem there was 280 ways of tampering meter energy meter so in that actually uh, one of the key uh, tampering uh, in the highest of priority was uh, the meter reader used to tamper the information when he writes down the bill or something so they wanted to have the, there is there should not be there should be a zero error between the uh, the data transfer so they come out with the like smart card kind of thing yeah yeah so then like you no know, the when we introduce a smart card system like uh, the 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 different different types of the products from the different companies and then they were never used to communicate to each other so there is a few interoperability kind of problem which exists with the, in the product then like you know the all meter reading like can be made a consortium and then this is about uh, coming out with a robust model wherein uh, wherein this this problems can be solved and then can make a very interesting product altogether so i mean to say like you know the many of the uh, a small size smallest problems can be solved with open innovation every time i go to a atm i always think that like you know the one one of the one of the machine that it uh, swa- swallows the card one is vertical insertion one is horizontal insertion the money come from the left money come from the right and the slip come from the top slip, slip come from the bottom absolutely many of the areas wherein like when we never the, this product manufacturers never talk to each other so always the elders have a problem in using this kind of products so open innovation is one of the key solutions to talk to each other and to come out with a robust model in like standardizing some of the key features so definitely the companies are hardies are very small and then you cannot really keep on increasing the r&d size and the cost of r&d is increasing how to bring all the all the uh, like how to bring the com- people from the different organization to talk to you and then get more ideas wherein your power of r&d goes up in it anyway so um, yeah so uh, that that's that's one thing uh, like you know the how how to get more ideas from outside your organization how a small organization even a r&d of 10 people actually how to get more number of ideas from the out, outside and then how to collaboratively increase the strength of your r&d through open innovation that's that's a key thing actually 
So in my presentation, like I am going to just uh, how exactly to balance between the intellectual property rights and then the open innovation. Intellectual property, if you see like you know, earlier, like you know, it was open culture and open, like you know, the, there is no culture of patenting, right? And then after 2005, really India has really put into a lot of efforts to bring in and to bring the awareness. Again, we are talking about the open innovation wherein you don't require any kind of protection as such. So I think when we are coming in, actually the whole world is going out. So how many of you use uh, uh, Facebook? I think if I say, who is not using it? I think very few, right? So one or two who is not using Facebook, absolutely. So there is, a, there is one of the key aspects of uh, open innovation is it's a cognitive decision making capabilities. Earlier, like, you know, the, when you want to buy a product or something, always you used to decide upon your family members or someone who is very close to you which product to buy or something. It's all about like you know, the cognitive, like where in you, what your community says about your, your decision. So even the photograph in your Facebook actually it is decided by your community, not by you. Even one of the bad picture, you, everyone likes it so that finally that becomes a profile photo of yours. So ultimately whatever the people like it, actually I'm going to be more towards it like. Here some open R and D is going on. <laughs> so more and more actually I what I'm mentioning was email is also is getting outdated actually. If you see many companies like they use a, a tool something like a Salesforce wherein people can interact in open directions. So hardly we use emails too. So I mean to say like you know, the, the more and more it's open, you, everyone's profile is available in the internet today, absolutely, right? Okay, so everyone is like you know, the, in the last, like even from the morning actually when we talked about uh, innovation age, everyone wants to be part of the innovation age. Uh, definitely the number of ideas and the number of uh, uh, thoughts with thought processes comes into uh, the organization is very, very important aspect. So if you see like, you know, that uh, in the recent past, if you see any magazine, you see like, you know, there is a lot of innovations, uh, like, you know, the study going on and everyone talks about who is innovative and how innovative. And definitely like, you know, the innovative is not all about competitiveness. If you are inno innovative enough, you are definitely going to stay in the market. It's a very important aspect. But how exactly the innovation is measured? Actually, many people will get confused. How, how the innovation initiatives to be uh, to be implemented in the organization? It's always a question mark. So, if you see the one of the key indicators for innovation in in 60s, if you see only if you're doing some R&D activity and spending some money on R&D activity, people consider it so basically you're doing some innovative activity. In 70s, if you see in the like an IPR and patents definitely came into existence, wherein the importance of IPR in in measuring innovation. And then India was much, much uh, like you know, depending on licensing and aspect actually. That is also one of the key aspects how much licensing in you do for per annum absenting. That is what measured as a how technologically or far or something. So if you see in 80s, if you see the human resources like wherein the software companies are picking up and then people realize that the, peop the people are the most important aspect in the organization. So and innovation surveys and understand how, how exactly, what people think about, what is the definition for innovation within the organization, what exactly the management thinks and what exactly people think of, uh, within, the, within the organization was became important. If you see 90 onwards, like you know, it become more and more complex to measure innovation. If you see the R&D activity, IPR activity, the patent, patenting aspects, right licensing and how much high, high technology area working in, and then HR, HR aspects and then innovation surveys and production technology surveys on what kind of new technologies you implement to uh, manufacture indicators of I, ICT and uh, productivity aspect and how much VCs are investing in you and then mergers and acquisition became a very important aspect. So all these things were started measuring one of the key indi indicators for innovation. But in the recent past, if you see like in the 2000 onwards, like if you see 2010 onwards, the open innovation always been the limelight, how much the ideas are getting from outside, including the suppliers and then the kind of uh, uh, stakeholders. 
So definitely, like you know, if you see traditionally, like you know, the the has uh, like make by a steel was a key aspect. Like and and then more importantly, the diffusion was felt, and then the 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 company, the people from the different organizations coming in and pulling in, and they coming out with the new products. And in the recent past, also if you see like you know the companies like uh, uh, the uh, Infosys and all like you know even started with the model with uh, uh, a service model, and then later on they come came out with uh, their own products too. So, like the, this is by uh, John Hengelberg from Deloitte. Actually, has mentioned the next way of innovation by enterprise will depend on the ability to get connected uh, with the people more effectively and provide them the right tools to support. So the, as I mentioned, like you know, the extensively basically the networking and then collaborative innovation was a key aspect, and then user-driven innovation. As I mentioned about the example of uh, the nurse coming out with an idea and then contributing for a medical product. And then the open functional model. What I talked about was uh, the metering company, wherein the having an interoperability kind of uh, opportunities definitely it's going to benefit the society in a longer way. So this is a, you know user, the, the power of uh, user driven innovation is this is a, a photograph from a Singapore mall, wherein these people are uh, testing the product and sitting in the middle of the mall. And if you find a bug, you'll get a gift hamper. So people come and spend hours together to find a right like bug in the video game technology. So the, your R and D is sitting in the middle of the uh, uh, middle of the mall, and then they're giving out the ideas for you to come up with the uh, next uh, uh, interesting feature in your gaming technology. So like you know, the uh, one is actually the ideas, uh, excellent ideas coming in, and then ideas to share with the other companies, wherein your suppliers and all may be interested if you pull out an idea which is not in use for your organization. So definitely, they they can be a, a growth driver for you uh, because when they come, started with a small uh, R and D in one corner, definitely if it matures up, actually they, again the company can buy back the technology and then develop further on it. So I always feel very pity. This is a photograph taken in one of the industrial area in Mysore. Like this is one of the classic example I can share that. Like my industry never talk to each other absolutely. Each one is showing that they own directions, and then the simple way of talking to each other can create a single board wherein people can uh, give the right directions. So innovation in isolation leads to these kind of uh, 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 nasty kind of uh, atmosphere. So open innovation is all about a movement. Actually, when if you are in right direction, people never bother to join you. That's the key about the uh, open innovation. This is a picture from, like, you know, the uh, I picked from the newspaper which I got a laundry cover actually. So uh, this this is uh, I always uh, uh, looking at this picture. I feel fear that okay people are sitting on the uh, electric lines and then sitting on the uh, front end of the uh, engine, right? So I, I always say like when you when you forget the risk actually, uh, like you know the when you for, uh, if there is excitement in what you do, really you forget the. Risk. So definitely, open innovation is all about excitement. It's not about the risk talking about losing the IP or something. What is exactly the management 1.2 versus management 2.0? It's basically that if you see the this is a traditional methodology of management wherein it was very hierarchy and procedural and process driven and centralized the control. Right, we have boundaries and need to know what information here, why you want to use this information. Proprietary and standard, like all this, like if you see today, absolutely Web 2.0, like the flat organization and agility and flexibility, user driven and more of a distributed, and then the kind of a, a open, a transparent, more transparent in terms of a, a, the business models and then open. So what I talked about is the product is all about static earlier days. If you see, it was only one way of communication, like a, a, you. you advise or talk to people over product, about your product through uh, magazines, websites, or radio, TV, or anything. If you see that uh, the more and more the products are nowadays is very much uh, bilateral, and then uh, people, it's not about like you know, the product uh, is uh, a very a single direction, it's basically a dynamic. People talk to each other, and then people discuss about, people observe. All those things happens in the open, open uh, you know, uh, scenario. Basically, like you know, the people get connected, people associate, people question why this particular product and why this kind of. So, why this? What happens? Your your the quality of the product and the quality of uh, like you know the product which you're going to bring it to the market is going to have a greater impact. It's all about the cognitive uh, decision making capabilities what you're creating through social dynamics. 
So if you see, like, you know, there are many companies that are come out with the innovation portals. Like, uh, if you see a Bosch, they say, that, do you have a solution? I'll throw a, uh, a problem to you. If you come out with, you'll get a gift hamper. And then these are the social innovation. The social, uh, for a uh, sorry, um, innovation portal also helps the companies to track the the future employee, or future genius employees to the organization. They track who is answering uh, more questions and then who is uh, actively participating. Try to pull them into the chain also. The same thing like you know, the uh, innovation for everyone initiative by Volkswagen. If you see the number of ideas and people vote on it and people uh, encourage and people build on the ideas and definitely the kind of uh, number of ideas even though they are not the car users, they are the passionate car, um, the automobile uh, uh, like you know, the um, social uh, group actually. They are very much wanted to contribute for the betterment of the product and what they want to see in the dream car. So the, even the Cisco, like you know, they have a model. They say like you know, the thousand thousand ideas that have been uh, contributed by uh, 2,500 participants from 90 countries. Can you believe uh, collecting a 2,500 uh, participants happening it's, uh, as good as your R&D staff uh, sitting in different countries and giving different perspectives? This is the power of. Uh, um, so, uh, like another you know, open innovation. The definitely, like balancing uh, these two is always a challenge. Actually, one side we talk about the IP rights, other side we say you have to be open enough. Like, uh, so like uh, one thing I always uh, caution you, like another you know, freely available or shared is uh, does not equal to free to use. You have to keep it in mind. Like open is not uh, does not equal to naked. I can say like you know, it's more of a open is <laughs> is all about open. That's it. So I, I was just like, you know, the, uh, this is uh, something from the copyright. I thought that uh, uh, how exactly it works in India, like, you know, the, uh, this journalist needed a, like, you know, the a picture, uh, he has written an article on uh, my Suzu, he want to pick up a photo, a relevant photo to put across it. And then he just searches the um, uh, my Suzu and an elephant to put across uh, next to it, because the logo of my Suzu is elephant and a calf. So you see the, like, you know, the nice image on the uh, Google and then he tries to pull out this is one of the best picture he got and then finally and then goes through and then he wants to download that and then it is through the Creative Commons it has been attached through Wikipedia or whatever maybe and he says the attribute is required and then it is a copy left you can use it however you want it's not I'm not bothered about uh, any money from you or something. But still, if you see, like, you know, very next day, uh, you see the, like, the new newspaper, his photograph is appearing in very, very prominent uh, position. Like, you know, the one question is, like, why, why did you use my photo and then not even contribute, like, you know, the attributed my name, actually. So even though it's my, one of the best photo I've taken in the zoo, like. So then next day, they say clarification, corrections, and then they say, and then say, where well, your name has been missed out and such kind of things. What I mean to say is a similar kind of situations may come in the open innovation and they put across the ideas whether you have to need to uh, attribute or whether you need to pay for him or how you want to really. That has to be very clear actually, like you know, the, how the, exactly the developed countries deal. So basically, they write, write a mail saying that I'm going to use this uh, particular picture and then when, when they say yes, actually, they use the picture in the, in the, uh, in the book or whatever maybe and then they can't attribute at the end of the book actually. That's the kind of... Uh, it's all about the discipline, what, what I am, and the kind of culture of uh, using the earth material is important. The best, all, all about the gardening is all about the, how to build a balanced open and IP right system and then how exactly the open innovation team and new product de development team can talk to each other and then bring the internal ideas and external ideas together into the table. And more importantly, how, how is this uh, open innovation ideas can be done, a due diligence has to be done actually, whether these ideas have been copied from outside or whether it's going to enter into any problems because of using the open innovation ideas. So what exactly you need a civilization in R&D is all about the commitment from the top management. Coming from the top is always matters a lot actually. Bottom up culture definitely to appreciate uh, whoever the strikes an idea or something like that. There should be a proper incentive systems and then a kind of uh, like you another know, appreciation should be there from people to participate actually. Even the Volkswagen gives uh, some kind of awards for contributing the ideas and all like. More, more importantly, like you know, the dealing with not invented here, basically there is syndrome. Like you know, the, when the, the ideas from outside comes in, there is always uh, the internal group like to try to kill the, the ideas which come from the outside. Sometimes, so definitely you need to have a, a right kind of uh, uh, team to uh, evaluate those ideas. 
and then like you know the many companies like you know that they ask the ideas like public to put across their ideas and then they put a, like a disclaimer saying that if you're working for other organization make sure that you are having a non disclosure with them and then you're informing the organization before playing in my uh, website in contributing the ideas just so, so that it will not be any conflict of interest between the organizations they are working and then uh, the, comp the to which the company they are uh, putting across the because your competitors employees may uh, can't like no participate in your in your uh, own innovation model yeah fine, fine. so um, the biggest concern the i think concern like you know, the open innovation model is employee mobility like you know, the when, when people go out of the organization like you know, they have access to the, the ideas which has been put across uh, to in the open innovation because it is not been protected and then the having the right click wrap agreements i don't the agreements should be built like a, because the moment you say click uh, like you know, the click wrap agreements actually still it is not very powerful actually so those kind of awareness should be built across and then the the cross border issues like another you know, nine from the ideas coming from 90 countries and all how exactly you're going to uh, uh, deal with and then will will there be a fair deal for individual inventors because will it be over like you know, it will be uh, stamped by the big companies the, the classic example is the flash of genius i think many of you have seen if you have not seen it's one of the good movie to watch uh, people are fascinated about the ipr especially the patent so in my conclusion, it's all about like you know the intellectual property framework is all about like something playing a soccer. You you have a right boundaries and see, you have a referee running behind you. If you make mistake, it'll show a red card or a yellow card or whatever it may be. Uh, it's all about the policing absolutely. Like you know the it's it's uh, the open innovation framework is all about playing balls actually. You, you, there is no boundaries and then we have multiple players to play in. You have a, a different hole and then and then it's all about the discipline and the kind of uh, ethics you follow. Uh, so it's all about uh, um, uh, playing the game uh, ethically. So conclusion is about like open innovation. You have to just play like a golf, not like a soccer. Thank you very much.